Today we're going to be doing a little work on our little Z Force 800EX. Um, we took her riding at Brown Mountain a couple of weeks ago, and uh, by the time she got home, we ended up just a little bit pigeon toed. We had a slight issue with a root snag hanging out on the bank, and taking her apart. Here's what we got. Yep, that's the steering rack. Steering box is busted. So we're going to be fixing this little issue this morning and we're going to replace it with the Super ATV 800S model steering rack. It's pretty beefy, considerably beefy compared to the stock unit. The one little issue we're going to run into, as you can see here, the, the, the bracket and the brace off to the side is just a little bit short compared to the stock unit. Um, from everything I've researched, uh, it should everything will still bolt up as far as the, the steering box itself goes. Tie rods are very similar in length. We may have to trim some of those off a little bit, but uh, about the only real modification we're going to have to do is on the actual uh, mounting brace for the steering box. So we've got well, what we're going to have to do, and I'm not going to do this verb, you know, each little step. Um, most of you guys can kind of figure out getting it out of the machine. Um, just take your little your little storage tray out of the top. You can reach right down to the top, untie, undo one tie rod. You can pull it all out on one side. But we're going to have to mount uh, the new steering box to this to this bracket. Uh, these three holes will line up perfect. Um, I've already kind of test run everything. These two holes over here. Uh, we're actually going to have to drill, drill two more up, two more holes. So we're going to actually mount the new box. We're going to transfer punch some holes into the the mounting plate. Uh, down here at the bottom, uh, we're probably going to end up with a half a hole. Um, just looking at it preliminary, um, not a big deal. Uh, I don't think it's going to be too much of a, a chore to to get this to work. So uh, stay tuned. Um, I'll show you each individual step as we go. I'm not going to video, you know, every bit of the, the whole installation and whatnot, but I'll show you what I've done as I do it. So if you're working on this project yourself, you can uh, you can kind of follow along and and not do like I'm going to do today and figure it out and make it work. The kit from Super ATV will come with everything you need. Um, there's our tie rod itself. Uh, these are the new mounting bolts. Um, I believe this this unit's even thicker than the original steering box on the Razor 800, so they send you a little bit longer bolts. Uh, here we've got our misalignment bushings and all mounting hardware for that, and it also comes with some steering stops. So yeah, not a bad little setup. So on the stock mounting bracket, I'm going to cinch these bolts up so I can transfer my holes but one thing I have noticed is there is a lot of play in the in the bolt holes so wherever you align the steering box um, you, if you're not careful you can tighten the bolts up and have it off one way or the other so the best thing I'm going to try to do is I'm going to line the gearbox up along with this straight edge um, that seems to be the best solution that I've found uh, without just mounting the whole nine yards up um, taking a level or something and making sure everything's straight and square um, I believe that'll work and be just fine 
All right, I've got it tightened up. Um, I went ahead and pulled the, the boot off because I did want to kind of see if I could make sure that these holes um, were kind of on the same plane. Okay, I've got a 21 64th transfer punch. Um, if you don't have a transfer punch set, you can always just scribe the hole and uh, eyeball the center. I like to use transfer punches because uh, they're actually pointy on the end. And I've got it in upside down just for demonstration purposes, but uh, when you put it in the hole, and of course it's gonna be flipped around, you hit the end of it, it'll actually transfer to the very center of where you want to drill your hole. Um, gives you a little divot so you can run your pilot hole. So what we're gonna have to do on this down here, where we will have, uh, let's see if I can get a better angle, half a hole, um, I'll have to just, uh, may end up having to die grind that hole out just a little bit. Drilling half a hole with a drill bit. If I had an end mill, it'd be perfect. Um, but we're just gonna have to see what we can do on that. Uh, we've got our transfer punch holes. Uh, this one is right on the very edge. It's gonna be really tough to drill that hole. Uh, I'd like to get something in there. Um, could kind of leave it out, I guess, but that only gives you four bolts instead of five. I'd prefer to have five. Since this one's so close, I'm actually going to drill my pilot holes from this side. We actually need to flip it over where it's got a flat surface. I'll use the drill press um, to do the bigger holes. So let's uh, drill out these smaller holes. So as you can tell, drill bit wouldn't actually drill that very well. The drill bit kept wanting to walk off and, and drill off center. So I ended up having to use a, a rat tail file. And I've worked it down to where, since this is going to be more sandwiched than encapsulated, I've just worked it down to where I can, I can get the bolt in there perfect. It's better than not having a bolt at all. So that's what we're going to work with. There's so much... Um, slop in the holes and there's so much movement um, before you tighten it down um, to take the thing out I took the steering box off and then took this bracket off uh, this is much beefier than the stock steering box um, so I'm assuming I'd have to put the bracket back in then the steering box I'm gonna try to put it back in all together just so I can make sure everything stays in line and I don't get it tilted one way or the other Probably not that big of a deal since you've got, you know, your heim joints and everything out on the side, but, you know, take just a few minutes, be a little more particular. Um, trust me, it totally sucks when your steering's gone and you're about four hours deep into the woods. It truly, truly does. All right, after a little uh, test run trial fit to see if the rack would fit in there with, uh, or mounted to the mounting bracket, it won't. Uh, so we're gonna have to put the mounting bracket back in then put the rack in separate. It's probably not a bad thing. We still have to make sure the rack is centered, so our steering is centered. So uh, we're going to stick the we're going to stick the mounting plate back in. Use uh, the the nuts the nuts that hold this in. are actually captured nuts that are still in the machine. So you just got four bolts. Uh, we're going to put a little Loctite on them just to just to make sure. Like I said, uh, the last thing you want way out in the woods is uh, your steering to go out or something to happen to it. So take a little bit of time, do everything right. It's uh, well worth it in the end. All right, so we've got our, our mounting bracket, our mounting plate back down in the in the machine. It's a little aggravating to get to. You'll have a couple of radiator hoses on this side. It's You kind of got to move out of the way to get the bolts in and out. Uh, just kind of looking around while I'm down in here. This machine's got less than 100 miles on it. It's only been on three easy rides for the most part. But I've noticed a couple things. Um, I mean, this is a cheap machine. There's no end or buts about it. Let's see if I can... The wires are exposed coming off the master cylinder. I'm assuming that's a, um, a low level indicator or something. The vent hose for the breather 
or for the differential front differential the vent tube was just kind of laying in here as i moved around it just fell down that would have been a bad thing crossing some water or something in the, the vent tube it's lower than it should be so we're gonna we're gonna fasten it up here somewhere where it's up high enough to be out of the way all right so one of the most important things we have to do is we have to make sure the the steering gearbox is centered so on this particular one i'm going to be using a millimeter scale you actually uh, measure from up inside you go from the further the closest distance that the the home joint will actually go up inside the the housing so we're going to be measuring from this face on this side but here's the stopping point on this side so we'll be measuring from right here all right so this side we've got 55 millimeters this side we've got about 53 so I'm gonna move it about a millimeter. So let's try that fifty four millimeters. And we're right at fifty four millimeters. So now what we want to do, we want to go on top. We want to put a mark. I'm going to mark it in two different colors in case I can't see one of them. Just want to make sure the steering gearbox stays straight. So I'm going to mark it with silver. Let's see, it's going to be in the machine this way, so I'm going to mark the black on this side. I'm going to come off the flat. Actually, I'm going to mark the silver again because that black doesn't show up very good. Once it's in the machine, it's going to be hard to tell where you can actually see the marks from. So I'm going to mark it in several different places. I don't think I'm going to be turning it enough to confuse which mark goes with which, but there we go. So now I'm going to install the steering stops. I'm going to put the boots back on, cinch them up, and then we'll get ready to put it in the buggy. So your wiener does tricks, does it? Yeah, it's pretty good at playing dead. Every now and again, when Stacy gets home, uh, he'll jump up and run to the door, but that's about it. <laughs> So there are two different sizes of boots and one's a little bit smaller than the other so go on a little easier. Uh, you can cut that. All right, we've, uh, we've got the steering box in. We've actually got the steering hooked up. We can see our timing marks really good. Uh, we've got the same amount of turn on the steering wheel in one direction as we do the other, but we did run into one little issue. Uh, the Super ATV Razor 800 steering gearbox being is so much beefier than the, the stock, it actually hits the front differential. So, in order to get to this point, we've actually had to loosen up our, our mounting plate. Um, I don't know if you can see very well, but I mean, we're extremely close to the differential. Without the mounting plate being uh, loosened up, where we could lift straight up. So now what we're going to do is we're going to shim it up. We're going to get it up equally and measure the distance, and then we're going to have to shim this up and get some longer bolts. 
in order to make this work. Uh, this is something you're going to run into at least on your 800EX if you do this conversion. All right, we got everything in, battened down, gave it a whirl. Uh, we ended up having to shim the mounting plate up about, well, three washers was 200 thousandths. Um, we're still hitting just slightly on that that nut right there on the differential, but I don't think it's going to hurt anything. Of course, we had to get uh, some longer bolts for that mounting bracket. It's M8 by 125. I think we got them 30 millimeters long. Plenty long enough. Uh, the factory bolts may have worked, but because they were pretty pretty long to, to screw out as we were taking it apart. But we got her cinched up. It's looking good. Steering works. I'm move on to the tie rods. Okay, so we run into a slight issue is uh, my kit from Super ATV did not come with uh, the ball joint ends that the misalignment bushings go in. Just the stock uh, ball joint ends or tie rod ends, if you want to call them that. Uh, they're they're a different. They're the same thread, but the stock CF Moto is right hand thread. These are left hand thread, so it won't work. Um, just doing a little research. Everyone says you have to cut about a quarter of an inch off of these tie rods themselves. So I I can confirm that we're screwed in as far as we can go there. And when we come down here, I mean, you've got very, very little adjustment and this may not even be um, lined up. It may be, it looks like it may be turned in a little if I have to turn it out any at all. There's just not gonna be enough adjustment there. So that's where I'm gonna stop this video because I'm actually gonna take these to a buddy's house and I'm actually gonna use a lathe and so I can actually cut them off good and square. Um, I don't see why you know a good sawzall or hacksaw if you wanted to do that uh, wouldn't work but i'm going to take my time and do it on a lathe so i'm going to conclude the video with that uh, didn't get a whole lot in detail i mean if you can turn a wrench you can figure out you know what we didn't show i just wanted to show you what we ran into and uh, the last thing is going to be taking about a quarter inch or so off each tie rod end. I may do an eighth inch off each end. I don't think it's really gonna matter. I don't know how deep the threads go. But uh, yeah, that's it. Uh, this is actually not a bad job. You will have to do a little bit of fabricating and engineering to make it clear the differential. But if you're looking to change that up um, for the little CF Moto 800, that's pretty much what it's gonna entail.